So I, I showed you the slide last week for the, uh, the the Zoom version. I wanted to show you the workshop version because it's important. And uh, what's different about this <clears throat> is that uh, Junko manufactures leader badges. Uh, uh, Larissa and Nico, you may remember these flat laminated badges. I made them the same size as a standard work badge and told people you can wear it under your work badge and when you, someone's giving you a hard time, you can flip up your work badge and show your leader badge and say, meet me where I, where I live. And have them uh, write their name on the flip chart, wear it throughout the workshop, and encourage people to uh, notice during the workshop uh, when they see you demonstrating your, your color. And then uh, have them write their name on a flip chart. And Go ahead. No? Okay. Right, write their, their name on a flip chart, and I analyze the team in terms of what it's good at and what it what it needs. So let's quickly go through what color are each of you. Uh, <clears throat> let's, let's start with uh, Lauren. What, yes. What, what color are you? Um, I would say... Probably, uh, definitely on the left side, either <laughs> including intuitive or including emotion, like intuitive. Uh, I, I, I want you to say green, yellow, blue, or orange. Oh, okay. You want to just pick one? All right. Yeah, I'll just yeah. pick green. One, just, I want you to take you back to the handedness story, just like you're right handed or left handed. You you have one natural place here. You're, you're yeah. green. Okay. Yeah, green. So, so, so that fits your, what you do for a living very well. Do you see that? Yes. And Nico. Oh, green, born green. Yep. So there you go. That fits what you do. Uh, Nat. Yeah. I ended up in blue. Yep. I think that's right. And uh, Tanya, I know your color. You do? You're green. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I can smell it over the over the internet. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> and Larissa, you're green. I am green, green, and I I'm having that laminated uh, a work badge. <laughs> so, so this is the uh, so so what I do is uh, when I have these big workshops in China, I would have them organize into groups of about fifteen or twenty people. And they would go up and, and I'd get like maybe with, with 300 people in the room, I'd have a whole bunch of these charts and I'd walk them through it and we'd discuss it together, what we could see about the uh, about each of the distributions and how it informs what the team could do. Sorry, Charlie, we missed someone um, to, to name oh. Lisa here, Beth, so. No, we did, M N Matt. Matt. Sorry, you're not visible on my screen, so I didn't. My apologies. Thank you, Larissa. That's okay. You you talking to me, Charlie? I'm talking to uh, M A T T. Uh, I I already gave mine. I was a blue. I think it okay. was Matt that we missed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure the first time who you were talking to, so um, we'll we'll have to work through that one. But um, I I am a blue. Yep. Yep. Very solidly. We have the Rinko online as well. Yeah. Charlie, can you guess oh, mine? Okay. Oh, there we go. What color are you? Can you guess it? You're a green. No, no I take it back. I take it back. You're an orange. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> the the clues there are your what you do for a living and your and your academic pursuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. That's right. I, I I think what I love about this is I don't know any other thing that's this simple to do, and uh, we talked a little bit about uh, relational difficulties across colors. Uh, do we, we want to talk more about that or move on? Cross, cross, yeah, it's clear, but cross colors is uh, sometimes um, can be confusing, especially well, when you're asking to pick one uh, color. The diagonals are usually the worst because I am most interested in what's uh, intuited and what's logical. So I'm least interested in what's emotional and what's sensed. 
So for me, it was years of struggle to uh, do more in the yellow. That's where my wife ended up, Charlie, on the diagonal to me in, in yellow after I went through it. Well, We've nice seemed to have worked it out is, a long time ago, but it's nice interesting. Thing about that is at least one of you cares about relationships. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for me, yeah. <laughs> in, in the book, there's a, a whole, not a whole section, several paragraphs about what's called the Imago theory of relationships. I don't know that it's right, but it's interesting. And what it posits is, that we're attracted to, to the things that we repress in ourselves. And so we're naturally attracted to the diagonal. And at first it works really well because it makes us feel like a whole person. Then over time we begin to reject that and the other person that we initially rejected in ourselves. And and the uh, the, the key to this, to succeed in this is to recognize and acknowledge that's maybe what's happening and to, you know, a lot of people say, I, I changed my storyline about my spouse from she's crazy to, yeah, I get it. She's just different. And that's what I like about her. So this is a, a, a big, powerful awareness step here. Uh, okay. Very good. Charlie, Tanya keeps looking at me funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've already heard her comment. <laughs> So, so what I think is what I think is going to work for you guys is I think you're. I'm going to talk more about this later. I think you're both intuitors, and if you're an intuitor, the cross is easy to do. So, so if, if that's your strong function, and I'll show more about this later, the 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 cross. If 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 you're both really, for example, if. If, 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 if overwhelming, you're an emotional decider, Tanya, rather than an intuitor, then the crossover is going to be difficult. For me, I, I am an overwhelming intuitor. That's that's for, that's home for me. That's what I like to do. That's where I live. So that's why do blue inventive material and do workshops works for me. It's easy to cross back and forth. This is home and this is easy. This is hard. And this is not this. This I'm trained to do have to do orange. Well, interesting thing here is that when I, I may have mentioned this, but it might have more meaning now. When I uh, formed my team for my 4D company, I, I, I recruited uh, managers from each of the NASA field centers that to uh, sort of manage the local work. <clears throat> and having spent a lot of time in project management, I, I had a lot of familiarity. So I asked myself who were the most impressive people I ever worked with. And I got all, I think I had eight of them. All, all eight uh, came and joined the company and seven of the eight were green and NASA, which is orange culture. So what's that about? That's because it's about working with people and what greens naturally do is value people. And that's our deepest need. So people who are naturally appreciate people go to, to top management. It's a, uh, and the higher you go in management, the less your own technical abilities matter and the more you rely on other people. That's just how kind of it works. That makes sense to you guys? For sure. Yeah. Helpful. So I was shocked when I first discovered that, but uh, they were all good with people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway, uh, So what I do when I'm looking at these team distributions is what tasks would you most naturally perform? And since I'm often with uh, uh, trainers in the room, green is the predominant color in most of the teams. And so what might have influenced the team's distribution? The leader's color. When I, have, when I find teams where the leader uh, formed them from scratch, Invariably, most of the people are the same color as a leader. Why is that? Because we like people who share our storylines. We like people who are like us. And that, that that's usually a big wake up. And education. I did a workshop at Goddard. Larissa, you were there. And uh, in the middle of the exercise, someone stood up and said something like this. There's uh, man, the data here. That there, there's, that there's 10, 10 PhDs in this room and none of them are blue. So it, universities 
uh, reward conceptual ability. And that's what blues do really well. Uh, organization and task. Uh, I, I did groups, for example, if it's the machine shop, there's, they tend to be sensors. Uh, <clears throat> And then uh, I, I took a look at each team and asked how 4D is it, is it? And, and I believe you should have all four colors. So I asked, what would each color add? So the greens, what would they give you? Deep values, empathy, and appreciation. This is essential for a, a, an effective team. I had a, a green older guy that, that I inherited when I took over the astrophysics division. I initially didn't have much use for the guy. And then I got it. He did something really important. We'd be sitting there in a meeting having a big debate about what to do. And he would say, stop. The only question is what's in NASA's best interest. And boy, that would focus the whole conversation. The yellows, harmony, collaboration. They're good people, they're fun to have around. The, the, the hallmark of yellows, and my builders are yellow, is everybody likes these people, universally liked. The blues, innovation, creativity, and vision and oranges, direction, process, and certainty. So if I do a, a work team and a, a color is not there, I would say, you know, next time you hire, you might want to think about uh, trying to fill that color in because you need all four. So just to summarize, one of these is home base, just like right-handed or left-handed, but we need to, do, need to be able to do all four things, probably even in a given day, especially if you're a manager. Card check on this idea makes sense. Okay. You want me to yep. share a story, a quick story? I can do it where I jump to a, into another color. Sure. Uh, it happened in Nepal during the walk, and one of the participants got uh, tested for COVID, and she tested positive. You know, with this group up in the mountains. <laughs> and the leaders then had a discussion and uh, had everybody into groups to discuss whether she can stay with us or not. And I thought, well, this is ridiculous. I mean, there's no space for green here. I think I just jumped into orange and I went to the leaders. I said, but discussions will only raise like uh, conflict and so on. There's no discussion here. There's only one right thing to do and just do it, you know, which they did. Thank you. So what'd you do? I just told them this is not for discussion. I mean, no, she's no. Did, did positive you, did, 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 for COVID. Did you send her home or not? Yeah, no, she was then immediately removed from the group. Yeah, I she agree. Went There's back no, to no, the hotel. no choice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. Okay. So uh, Gene Krantz is one of my personal heroes. Uh, he was the flight director for the first moon landing. And I want you to see uh, if you can tell his color listening to him talk. Uh, the other speaker is Steve Bales, the guidance officer. What clues telegraph his innate personality? How does he use emotions and storylines to motivate his team? Two weeks later, the first moon landing is about to begin. Gene Kranz's entire life has led him to this moment. Of all of the uh, flight directors, I'm probably the most emotional. And I felt compelled to talk. I said, we're getting ready to make history. We're getting ready to make history. You know what we're about to do. From the day that we were born, we were destined to be in this room this day. I have trained. I have absolute confidence in everyone in this room, but I want you to know something. I know no matter what happens to us this day, I will stand behind every decision that you make. However it goes. However it goes. When we walk out of this room, we walk out of this room as a team. I can't even say that today without getting choked up about it. That was the best, best thing he could have said to me. And I said, lock the control room door. And from that moment forward, no one would enter or leave this room until we had either landed, we had aborted, or we had crashed. 
So I want you to notice how he established a mindset using an emotion with a storyline. And the first thing he told you is, I'm probably the most emotional. What does that tell you about his colors? He's either green or yellow. Then he green, uses, I would say. yeah. Nico, do you want to say something? Uh, green. Think about, well, the first thing I want you to see is he was green or yellow, but I want you to notice what he languages things. We. 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 Team. We. We. That's yellow. A blue would have said, I'm getting ready to break history when I walk out of this room. <laughs> 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 wasn't it interesting that they picked an emotional decider to lead this effort this is the probably the biggest moment in NASA's entire history and here they've got an emotional leader why is that because he's already mastered the orange side he's a he's a fighter pilot so this is a four, very four-dimensional person this was do you think this was effective yeah. So <clears throat> this is a uh, CEO of Lockheed Martin. Uh, this is in here because I'm, tr I'm I'm trying to highlight uh, women in management when I can find examples. And I've talked with her, and she contacted me about 4D, and said she's asked to speak at the Air Force Academy, and she looked at the Pew Research data. What leadership traits matter the most? And so the first clue is how she decide what to talk about. She went to data. Who would do that? Orange. Orange. She said, I chose these four. First, she picked decisive. Why would that be first? Then she said, trustworthy, compassionate, and innovative. I said, thank you for a 4D choice. And do you think she's 4D able? You bet. What color is what color are eighty percent of CEOs in America? They're orange. Orange. Why is that? Because CEOs are there because of the tangible items, stock prices, uh, uh, decisions that grow the company, etc. So I just want you to see how, how people telegraph this so easily. So <clears throat> the Chinese are always looking to find a simple answer to things and I'm always trying to take things more holistically and so th this is kind of a bigger picture of each of the personalities for the greens the driving values are serving people living deep human values they are innately empathetic and appreciative they're compassionate and caring the typical occupations are teachers coaches HR and what's their innate limitation? It's always the diagonal. When, they, when they're 1D, they become overly emotional and unorganized. That feel like it fits you, Greens? Pretty much. So why is the diagonal the, the weakest part? So imagine that you're a Green and you're interested in intuitive information and emotional deciding. What you care least about is what's logical and sensed. And there's kind of a conservation principle in here. As you become more and more in one direction, you kind of diminish the other. The yellows, it's about relationship first, <clears throat> collaborating, near universal likability. Again, my builder, Tom Ramsey, is a yellow. Everybody likes this guy. He, collaboration and harmony. We've not had an unpleasant word in almost two years of high stress work, commonly marketing sales. <clears throat> when they're 1D, they're conflict intolerant. So the thing I'm seeing here, the biggest limitation of these people is that they cannot deal with, they cannot remove poor performers. They, The relationship is so important. And uh, Tom has a guy who works for him who's kind of a, very friendly guy, I've known him his whole life. Every time the guy picks up a hammer, I've got to worry he's going to destroy something. And I keep 
talking to him about, you got to get rid of Bob. And he says, yeah, I will. I'm going to. He never does. I know he's not going to, so I quit saying it. But that's that's the yellow writ large. The Blues uh, being the best and being right is big for us. So Junko and I have a lot of a lot of arguments about who's right, of course, especially intellectually. <clears throat> We're both really good at critical thinking. Most appreciate clarity of thinking. Sloppy thinking is something I cannot tolerate. Uh, scientists and PhD, here's, here's the Goddard workshop. I misremember the numbers, but there were 10 PhDs in the room and someone noticed this, nine were blue. I remember that. Yeah. Innate limitation, <clears throat> criticism limits relationships, and we change our mind all the time. Why do we do this? We love the new idea. When the new idea walks by, we pick it up. So I've got some blue people I'm working with and they just can't stick to 4D. They've got to be bringing something else in all the time. And I got to keep telling them, no, no, no. You're going to confuse everybody. And the oranges, uh, discipline, process, and organization, structured thinking. They most appreciate certainty of result. Common occupations, engineers, CEOs. <clears throat> and their innate limitation, when they're 1D, they lack empathy for others. That's why the CEOs get up with a big smile and say, I did something great today. I closed a factory and got rid of 50,000 jobs and everybody cheers. There's no empathy for the, the people that were, that were injured. So you, you know the difference between scientists and engineers? The difference is scientists love surprises, engineers hate them. So meet me where I am. I think it's very useful to begin with people's color. I worked for a blue uh, administrator, I told you, with a Dom Donald Trump type personality. And the way I communicated with him is I always started with the, the blue, the big idea. And once he loved that, once he settled in, I took him in the other colors. I didn't know the colors, but I did it sort of intuitively. And so <clears throat> uh, I think it really works well to, to speak to someone where they are first, they get comfortable with you, then you can take them into the rest. And I think it's very important to match the team leads and, and the members to your customer's color when you're writing proposals. I, I told you TRW have won billions and billions of dollars in work because I did this work for them over and over and over. When you don't match, you lose to someone who does because in aerospace, at least, the technical proposals are always good. There's good folks doing the engineering work. So, I believe teams have to evolve. Uh, blue is the right place for startup companies and early phase projects. They're very similar when you're doing trade studies. Uh, the, Steve Jobs, I don't know much about him personally. Um, I've never, I mean, I've never interacted with the guy, but I've read books about him. It's an interesting story in that the, the board threw him out of a company he founded. Why was that? Well, he made himself CEO and he was so blue. What's the problem with blue? You keep changing your mind to new ideas. You have to at some point turn to manufacturing and start to make money for the company to pay back the investors. When, when he came back, he came back as chief of technology with, somebody, with an orange guy running the company. And the company's, I think today, got one of the biggest uh, market caps in the world. And so for the, for a late phase company like Lockheed Martin, I'd want a Marilyn Atkinson running the company, not a Steve Jobs. So with flight projects, very often, especially the big complex ones like JWST had a, a, a very blue NASA manager. And I pulled him aside and said, just so you know, they're going to fire you when the money starts to flow. He says, what do you mean? I said, you're not going to, you're not going to survive this because when, when you're a blue and you're doing all this creative work, this sort of architectural work. But when serious money flows, they're not going to trust you. So just so you know, don't take it personally. Sure enough, the day that they got to their first review milestone, they removed him. And the, I went and talked to the new manager who was known for as, as a project closer, a very orange guy. And I said, how's it going with the team? He says, I, I don't know what it is. I, I just can't stand these people. I'm getting rid of most of them. I said, I, I can tell you why. 
they're blues and you're orange. You can't you can't stand them. Uh, the oranges NASA Center is Marshall, where I did a lot of work. They actually couldn't stand the blue scientists so much that they moved them off site into a separate building. They couldn't even stand to be around them. So that's the, the color conflict. A lot of people ask me about what happened with Hubble. And part of the conflict was Perk and Elmer was very blue team doing very blue work. And Marshall was very orange. And they had constant conflict. So the solution for Perk and Elmer was to put a yellow guy in the middle. And he got ground up like a motor and pestle, as I knew he would. So get a lot out of these colors. So what's interesting about the colors is that they're so powerful, they can make us do things that we otherwise wouldn't want to do. And this is a story about a scorpion who wants to cross a river. And the scorpion can't swim, of course. And so after a while, a frog comes by and he says, how about a ride across the river? The frog says, no way. You might sting us and kill us both. Scorpion says, I wouldn't do that. That would be stupid. The frog says, okay, hop on. To get to the middle of the river, the frog feels this thing, said, you killed us both. Why? The scorpions do what scorpions got to do. And our innate personalities program us, pre-program us to behave in ways that may or may not serve us well. So we're gonna practice coloring people and we're gonna use this idea to look at what color is their strength. And just to remind you, green is about empathy and appreciation and deep values. Yellow is about inclusion, relationships and likable. Blue is about being the best, big ideas, stretch visions and clear, consistent process and direction. So people say to me sometimes, I can't, I'm not sure what my color is. And so I said, what you might do is think about your diagonal, what's your weakness? And that's another way to get a handle on your color. So for me, if I didn't know that I was blue, I'd say, yeah, this is what's hard. The yellow's hard for me. I'm definitely blue. So you can also use that method. So let's see if you can characterize Howard Hughes, just watching him for a few minutes. This is what you're looking for. Let me see, did I skip over the video? Yeah, hang on, I, I, I messed up there. This is something I blanked for whatever reason. It can clean itself in the hole. Good idea. I think it's a brilliant oh. idea. And it's a vast improvement over Howard Sr.'s bit, too. And I think it's fair to say that Howard Sr. was a very smart man. Yes, indeed. He was the best in his field, Noah. And that's what I intend to do. I am going to be the best at whatever I do. And I think one of these days we're going to wake up and discover that uh, Howard Hughes is the richest man in the whole wide world. Did you bring the material, Cruxhank? Yes, sir, I got the material. Which one is that? This is the one uh, where the hero is at the end and uh, he's in a sort of a confused state, you know? Oh, yeah, well, you got your ending all wrong, Cruxhank. How's that? Well, you have your hero losing his job, losing his girl, and losing his self-respect. Well, that's the way it is in life sometimes, though, you know, I, uh... Hell, that just shows he's got no brains and he's got no guts. It's bad enough when a novel ends that way. It's even worse for a motion picture, Cruikshank. We're going to have to change that ending. Uh, yes, sir. Well, it's a most peculiar world, Cruikshank. Now, that is, I guess most people are supposed to take an interest in their fellow man. But for some reason, however, I just don't uh, seem to be as interested in my fellow man as I am in other things. What other things? Well, I guess you'd have to say those things that are all around us. The Earth, and uh, what the Earth is made of, and the sky, and the universe beyond. I have more real interest to see, Cruikshank, in uh, why we get from summer to winter than I'm ever going to have in understanding my next door neighbor. I'll tell you the truth, Cruikshank, most people just bore me, and I don't want to get involved with them. Now, how long are you going to be there? I don't know.
I have some preparations to make, Noah. Preparations for what? Going around the world. Well, how would I'm going to surprise you? I think that's the best thing you could do right now. Just get away from everything, take it easy, sit back on the deck of an ocean line and let the world go by. Good idea. <laughs> no. No, Noah. <laughs> no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fly. Fly. Now, you correct me if I'm wrong, Howard, but as I recall, Wiley Post is the only man in the world that ever... You're not going to do that. You're, you're not going to... You're not going to try and break his record. What color is he? It's an easy one. Blue. You see it everywhere, don't you? The big ideas. Well, you know, know I, I, I say... Charlie. Oh, sorry. His vision? Richest man in the whole wide world? Mm -hmm. Fly around the world. In the second uh, part where he was talking about the narrative, the hero's journey, I thought that he had, uh, he really wasn't in the blue, that he was actually had a, a, a different perspective, maybe um, an appreciation of the, of the value of, uh, of the hero's journey. You're talking more a human in, story. In, in the video clip? In the video clip, when he was in the plane and his partner was talking to him about the story and the hero, and the hero was like losing everything, oh, and he's yeah. like, "Well, no, that's 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 not really the way people want to hear stories." Yeah, what what I what I took away from that is the capriciousness. So the message for me there, you know, the movie never got never came out because he kept changing his mind. So that 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 was the 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 message for me in that the capriciousness. Constantly changing his mind. Got it. And does he clear about his desire to relate with people? Yeah. No <laughs> desire. <laughs> <laughs> so when I think about being blue and, and myself, the question in every situation is, is would you rather be close or be right? So, particularly with my wife, I decide I'd rather be close than be right, so I don't argue. <laughs> <laughs> which which brings you more happiness, being close or being right? Being close. <laughs> On your feet. Exercise time. Everybody up. Okay, feel free to keep moving if you like. So, hey, Charlie, a question on that, uh, the last bit that you just went over. Yeah. I, I, I've noticed for me, I've gotten better as I've gotten older over time of kind of being able to live in all of those uh, areas, depending on the situation. But I've also known people that seem to get more and more ingrained in one area. Yeah. But why is that? Or what, in your experience, why, why do some people you know, expand and others seem to contract into that? It, it may be the, the stress they experience. I, um, I, I think this, this whole thing we're going to do is, is kind of a package. It's a, it's a holistic thing. And if you do things like uh, commitment to live in abundance rather than scarcity, uh, live in integrity rather than, you know, covering up your failings, all these things, these are all things that support you being 4D. So I think without, so, someone else may have an idea about this, but I think if you find people that... <clears throat> I don't find many, but I do find people that live in scarcity and it's a bad place to live. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk more about all these ideas, but I think I think it's about the, the 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 overall package of how you experience life and yeah, you know, yeah, makes sense. 
And let's try another one. So let's see what color this guy is. You guys remember what we worked on in practice, all right? I want to see it on the court. <laughs> How many times are we going to pass before we shoot? Four. How many? Five. Four. Four. <laughs> Ray, Ray, pass the ball. Holly, go in for Ray. Now, move. Come on. Praise Father. <laughs> What is he trying to do? Here's demo lesson. <clears throat> He's trying to assert authority, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. My, my way of the highway. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what color is his innate personality? I would guess an orange. Yep, sure. orange. And what's the what's the weak diagonal? Do you see any empathy for those young boys? No. No. <laughs> Would a green ever talk to people like that? Nope. Yeah. I mean, yes. Because I think, you know, he's expressing love. It's like a hard form of love. Like he, I, my interpretation is that he gets that if these people don't, the kids don't learn how to listen to what he's saying, follow directions, do what's right in the long term, that they're going to lose long term. They may win short term, but they won't like win in life. So I think that's a form of a form of love to say, hey, I'm going to give you a hard time, but it's going to pay off in the end. So that's, again, my interpretation. I didn't see a lot of love in the way he delivered the message. Yeah, so I sure. I, I would agree. <laughs> I, 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 I have a similar opinion with Lauren, and that's probably part of me being orange. But it's like <laughs> his delivery, but I mean, his delivery is terrible. But his long-term message is right, right? Like if if you teach them to do teamwork and then you really impress upon them, yeah, you got to do teamwork, well, you got to do something. Is it the right way? Well, it looks terrible. And will it win him many sympathies of the, of the players? No, he might lose all the players or he might lose coaching position. Yeah. In the movie, they actually fired him. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so Michael Winter, he's definitely orange. We all agree he's orange. <laughs> a, a team effort is a lot of people doing what I say. <laughs> Let's try another one. Sharing the laurels of this moment with Britain's gallant Montgomery, General Eisenhower displayed the understanding that brought about his selection to lead the crusade in Europe. Ike becomes the architect of victory in Europe, the inspiring figure that conceived and executed D-Day. Any person, whether he is at the plow in the field or at a gun with a gun at the front, that fails to do his full duty 
every day, every hour, must forever bear on his own conscience the certainty that he's contributed in some incalculable amount, be it little or be it great, to the agony and the anguish and the sacrifice that our two countries must endure. But upon your shoulders rests the greatest responsibility of all. You young men have this war to win. It is up to you men to give your units, whether it is a tank crew, a platoon, or becomes a company, leadership every hour of the day, every day of the week. You must know every single one of your men. It is not enough that you are the best soldier in that unit, that you are the strongest, the toughest, the most durable, the best equipped technically. You must be their leader, their father, their mentor, even if you're half their age. You must understand their problems. You must keep them out of trouble. If they get in trouble, you must be the one that goes to their rescue. That cultivation of human understanding between you and your men is the one art that you must yet master, and you must master it quickly. Then you will be doing your duty, and you will be worthy of the traditions of this great school and of your great country. To each one of you, I wish Godspeed and good luck. It seemed like a strange speech from a military commander. Yep. So what did you see? What was the direction? You must be their father, mentor. Yeah, so it's all yellow. Yellow. He's yellow. Oh. By the way, there's there's more to the story. The reason he was chosen to be Supreme Allied Commander is he was the only person that could get along with Montgomery, who was a 1D blue. And also think about his presidential campaign, I like Ike. Have you have you have you seen, got any I like Trump stickers? <laughs> and how about the face off between Al Gore and George Bush? What was the color face off there? What color is uh, George Bush? I'd say he's yellow. Well, the story I think about him is that he'd be glad to have a beer with him. He didn't drink beer, but he'd be fun, a nice neighbor. Right. And Al Gore is the intellectual. So who's going to win the election between the emotional and the logical? The yellow. Emotional. Yeah. The yellow. Yep. yep. <clears throat> so I think the vision was very weak. We're going to defeat Nazism through relationship. That's not a vision that would appeal to a blue like me. This is a, this sums up the yellow completely. Some of my friends are for it. Some of my friends are against it. I'm for my friends. That's the yellow writ large. By the way, the he's showing you something else. The yellow green boundary can be a little vague. So there's certainly a lot of green coming through too. What that tells me is that his dominant function is his emotional decider. Sure. Whoops, I think I gotta unmask this thing. Hang on, I don't know why these are masked. Um, sorry, I didn't look for this, but uh, I didn't. No problem, Charlie. Thank you. I have empathy for you. I want to welcome you all, every one of you. We have no secrets. Let us begin by being clear about General Smut's new law. All Indians must now be fingerprinted, like criminals, men and women. No marriage other than a Christian marriage is considered valid. Under this act, our wives and mothers are whores, and every man here is a bastard. Yeah. 
He has become quite good at this. And a policeman passing an Indian dwelling. Huh. I will not call them homes. May enter and demand the card of any Indian woman whose dwelling it is. I understand. He does not have to stand at the door. He may enter. I will not allow it. That's on my I swear to Allah, I'll kill the man who offered that insult to my home and my wife. And let them hang me. I say, talk means nothing. Kill a few officials before they disgrace one Indian woman. Then they might think twice about such laws. In that cause, I would be willing to die. I praise such courage. I need such courage because in this cause, I too am prepared to die. But, my friend, there is no cause for which I am prepared to kill. Whatever they do to us, we will attack no one, kill no one. But we will not give our fingerprints, not one of us. They will imprison us, and they will fine us, they will seize our possessions, but they cannot take away our self-respect if we do not give it to them. Have you been to prison? They beat us and torture us. I say that we I am asking you to fight. To fight against their anger, not to provoke it. We will not strike a blow. But we will receive them. And through our pain, we will make them see their injustice. And it will hurt, as all fighting hurts. But we cannot lose. We cannot. They may torture my body, break my bones, even kill me. Then they will have my dead body, not my obedience. We are Hindu and Muslim, children of God, each one of us. Let us take a solemn oath in his name that, come what may, we will not submit to this law. God save our gracious King, Thou live our noble King, God save our King. Okay. What color did you see? What, what, what was the driver behind the whole thing? In green? It looked like green to me. Yeah. Yep, he's green. And very 4D. And Ben Kingsley was brown. <laughs> was that a joke? Uh, yes, yes, I yes, that's a joke. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> Ben's not brown. <laughs> uh, I want you to, what, what, what were the driver, the whole thing was the values, the spiritual nonviolent resistance. Where, where to do me, you it was, 
Mm -hmm. For me, it was orange, Charlie. For me, it was like absolute orange. So you didn't see that the values were the most important thing here, the nonviolence. If, if it were, if it were orange, see, wouldn't, wouldn't you fight if it were orange? Wouldn't that yeah, be the I see this. I see this orange like giving direction, and he actually, you know, he included and he overcame all the emotions, but <clears> given <throat> a clear direction. It's just okay. my feeling. I, I, I think it's the, the, to me it's the, the the values were the thing that did it. Without the nonviolent resistance, this would not have worked. But. I think I think what he's also showing you is that uh, he's very four dimensional. When people are, it can be hard to spot the color. But look at this: the, this direction is very clear, and the vision uh, is phenomenal. We cannot lose. Mm -hmm. And you see the inclusion over and over. Even in the end, he managed to get the uh, soldiers to stand up using the British na national anthem included them mm -hmm. but i'm i'm surprised you don't see that in mandela also that was about the values more than anything i think this is powerful because it's 4d so who took the needed actions who who saved the day as it were who, who did what was necessary for this to work do you remember the the guy who stood up first yeah and if you look carefully, you'll see them both making eye contact with Gandhi. This is interesting. And so what I tell people when I do teams is when your team needs your leadership, are you going to stand up? Are you going to let your team leader carry the whole burden? Important lesson. So, so something else that was very powerful for me in this video, uh, actually sort of life-changing, all fighting hurts. I had an occasion with NASA where I had a, a hotel bill for a workshop that was within their guidelines that they gave me for $20,000. And after the workshop, they changed the rules and refused to pay me. And I was mad. And so I thought, I'll get a lawyer and sue my customer. Then I thought, all fighting hurts. Is it worth it? No, just forget about it. So that's been a big lesson for me. All fighting hurts. Often someone wants to engage me in some conflict and I just choose not to. Okay to move on, how are we doing? Doing good, a lot to process. Yeah, lots of information. So <clears throat> my friend Gerald asked me about this and uh, he's a 4D provider in, in Berlin. Uh, but now lives in Dubai. And so I made this little chart. So this is me. I'm a I'm an intuitor and I'm primarily blue. What that means is blue gives me energy. Nothing energizes me like a new idea. I mean, it just fills my body with energy. And so the box size is the energy uh, measure. Because it's next door, I can do green pretty well, and I get energy from that, but not as much energy as I get from the, the ideas, but I still get energy. The orange is a sink of energy. I don't get energy out of doing orange. I have to spend energy to do it, but I've got enough energy from my blueness to power that small electric motor when I need to. The uh, yellow takes tons of energy. And that is a big motor for me, hard for me to turn. That's kind of where I live. So imagine I'm talking with someone whose dominant function is sensor. And they get energy from, from relationships, things they sense. Uh, I often in workshops, when we're doing this work, I'll walk up someone and shake their hand and notice that in the exchange, we're both getting energized by the relationship and the energy flow between us. And for this, if that's their dominant function, they also get energy out of the orange. That works for them too. It takes a lot of energy for them to be green and tons for them to come up with vision, new ideas, this kind of thing. 
So let's imagine I'm watching a sunrise or a sunset and, and I'm with a person who I know has that personality. My first impulse is to explain the physics here, how uh, what we're actually seeing is electrons that are uh, being uh, losing energy by changing shells within the nucleus, the Bohr energy model, and how the light's being refracted by the, the uh, sky. And then I get it. That's not what this relationship needs. So I stop and quit all that and just say, what a lovely sunrise. So <clears throat> everybody on board here, Does that makes sense? Yep. Okay. So I remember I, early on, I talked about taking the things from various leadership books and putting them on the wall in my office and trying to find an organizing theme using coordinate systems. Remember this? And it failed. Here's why it failed. Every book is written from one color. Stephen Covey writes books. Actually, he most of his writing is as a deacon and was he's deceased, but uh, as a deacon in the Church of Latter Day Saints, it's religious values. <clears throat> this book, a lot of people recommend to me. I don't like it. It's it's called the Five Dysfunctions for the Team because it starts off saying. The only thing that matters is teamwork. So I said, all you're telling me is you're a yellow personality writing this book. Then when I was at NASA, our blue administrator, a guy named Jim Beggs, got us all to read In Search of Excellence, which is a blue book. He picked the book to match his personality. And then there's things like the disciplined leader, orange. <clears throat> so here's the gift you have. All these famous writers see their personality scores, the path of success, you have an insight they don't have. You need all four dimensions. Okay. There's a quick comment, Charlie. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, I just need to share with you. I mean, um, there's different ways in which to get also into this uh, Carl Jung based thinking and personalities like the colors. But uh, the 4D really made me aware of it. So, I'm, I'm really uh, got a lot to reflect on in terms of the project that I'm busy with, uh, which is connected mm. to the with the walk. And that was really a challenge in all colors. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm constantly I have to challenge myself to cross boundaries there. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're, you're trying to bring a blue method to a green situation, to green a situation, aren't you? 100%. So we'll close this section. I just thought right on time. Our innate preferences, present at birth, preferences for information deciding define our foundations, influencing every aspect of our being. People who use this tool find it very useful reporting a deeper understanding of themselves and others. Junko and I frequently talk about what's going on in terms of people's colors and people who know this work. It's really fun. Uh, you can use this to pick the right job. I didn't talk much about this, but most of the jobs in NASA are orange. When I was in orange jobs, I was stagnant. When I got blue jobs, my career and took off. Optimization of team performance. We talked a little bit about that. And really important, nothing in here suggests using this to limit anyone. So please don't do that. Card check, how are we doing? Thumbs up? Doing great. Very good. Okay, well, it's 10 o'clock we put for today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you guys feel full? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I need a second session just to process all this. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Uh, so, so as I, as I have it, I always have to remind myself and everybody. So there's a 